Starting off the news this week, the James Webb Space Telescope has released two stunning images of Jupiter, the largest planet in our solar system. The images released, and coloured so we can see it in proper detail ourselves, were really quite something, surprising even the astronomers working on the project with its clarity. The singular image was created from several that JWST took, similar to most other images that NASA have released from the telescope, as the actual size of these images is incredible. Most clouds on the image, including the famous Great Red Spot, appear white as they reflect a large amount of sunlight. One of the images even picked up a pretty clear view of Jupiter's rings, which is something we rarely get to see with such clarity. In other news this week is an interesting paper published in the journal Nature which has discovered that a microscopic fossil organism from the early Cambrian period, which was thought to potentially be the oldest member of the deuterostomes, is in fact not. Deuterostomes is the larger group that we as vertebrates are a part of, with the main definition of the grouping being that the anus develops before the mouth does during the growth of the embryo. This Cambrian fossil, named Saccharitis, was originally thought to be a very old member of this group due to apparent openings on its body that were interpreted as the deuterostome feature. However, this new paper describes more fossils of this animal which show that the openings were actually an artefact of preservation, and instead Saccharitis is more closely related to arthropods and their relatives. So the origin of deuterostomes remains mysterious for now. Another very interesting paper published this week has compared how mosasaurs evolved with the evolution of ancient cetaceans. Despite a similar return to aquatic locomotion in both groups, the first fully aquatic members of both lineages had very different skull shapes and were clearly adapted to occupy different ecological roles. The study also found significant divergence in later evolutionary trends between cetaceans and mosasaurs. While mosasaurus skull shape evolved in a radiating fashion, lacking a clear pattern and apparently reversing shape several times, cetaceans seem to have developed shallower and more elongate snouts possibly as an adaptation for feeding on smaller prey items. There's also some incomplete convergence between megapredatory and longyrostrine forms of both groups, indicating that there was stronger selection of the function of the crania in these types of ancient whales and mosasaurs. A very interesting study that shows the similarities and differences between the evolution of these unrelated lineages. And finally, of course, there's been some exciting Megalodon news this week as well. This paper created a 3D model of this giant shark by using a remarkably complete vertebral column from this animal found in Belgium, along with an associated dentition found in the US and using a scaled up cartilagina skull from a great white. Incredibly, they... Th <laughs> Ice cream. Do you know why they cover it? Because every time I do, I go get an ice cream. Do you want an ice cream? <laughs> Incredibly, they then used this digital 3D model to estimate an adult individual's mean absolute cruising speed, which, based on its estimated body mass, was found to be about 1.4 meters per second, seemingly faster than the mean cruising speed of any living shark. They also find that Megalodon would have been capable of fully consuming prey items the size of modern apex predators such as orcas. The study therefore labels Megalodon as a transoceanic super predator, a shark fully capable of crossing oceans and feeding on large bodied prey items. Definitely an absolutely amazing animal if that wasn't already established. Well that's it for 7 Days of Science this week, I do hope you enjoyed and we'll see you on Sunday for the next episode in our South Africa series.